The movie opens in Mexico. We see two homeless guys under a bridge when one of them steps into a secret buried compartment. He checks inside to reveal a piece of cloth wrapped around a blade. Seemingly possessed, he picks up the spear and begins to leave when a car crashes into him. The car is badly mangled but the man is completely fine as a mark appears on his hand and he runs away unharmed. On the other side of town, a mother is bringing tea for her daughter when she screams in horror seeing her daughter possessed by a demon, crawling in the top corner of the room. A typical teenager. Later, a cab pulls up and a man cloaked in black steps out. The man is the famous exorcist John Constantine. He is approached by Father Hennessy who confesses that he is unable to pull out the demon out of the girl. John makes his way to the girl's room with the resident staring at him. He places his lit cigarette on the furniture and lets the sunlight in on the snarling girl. He finds a pendant that the demon reacts to, then crouches over the girl, introducing himself to the demon. John presses the pendant against the girl's head and the demon screams before going silent. Something is not right though and the demon tries coming out through the girl's body. John orders the residents to get him a mirror about three feet high and smashes the windows to the room. Downstairs, his sidekick Chaz is waiting for him, and John tells him to move the car from that spot. The residents bring the mirror in and hold it over the girl. John tells them to keep their eyes closed no matter what they hear. John begins to recite spells but one man looks and he suddenly ages rapidly. John calls the demon out then traps it inside the mirror. John eventually forces the mirror outside and it smashes to pieces, freeing the girl from the possession. John stumbles out of the room exhausted and sees a drawing of the Spear of Destiny on the wall. Unknown to him, a figure rolling a coin on his fingers menacingly is watching him. John then heads back to his empty apartment and lights up another cigarette in deep thought. Elsewhere, we see a female officer, Angela, heading home after confession. We hear her confessing that she killed another man today and it is starting to bother her. She tries to sleep but is suddenly awakened by a voice and finds herself inside a hospital room. She runs to the roof, revealing the same mark on her hand as the man before. She then jumps from the roof and lands inside a pool. It turns out that this was a dream and Angela awakens in fright. At John's apartment, he coughs up blood and gets a lung scan at the hospital. He scoffs at the irony of defeating demons but being done in by cancer. The doctor tells him that he needs to prepare for his end but John tells her he already knows where he is headed. Angela is then called to a crime scene at the same hospital that she dreamt about. At the hospital pool, she is shocked to see her twin sister Isabel seemingly having jumped to her death. Angela refuses to accept that her sister would end herself like this. On her way out, she sees John taking the elevator and asks him to hold it but John is a douche and lets it close. At the Mexico border, the homeless man jumps unnaturally over the fence and as he walks, all the cattle around him begin to fall one by one. John then meets with a man known only as the vermin man at his home. The vermin man has brought John new gadgets such as bullet shavings from the assassination attempt on the Pope, screech beetles and an instrument containing dragon's breath. John tells him about the soldier demon that he pulled out of the girl and thinks that it was trying to come through. The vermin man is doubtful as demons cannot use humans as portals. Later, John and Chaz sit in the car outside in the rain. John heads inside the chapel and is surprised to see Angela there as well and she recognizes him. Angela speaks with the priest and John speaks with a suited figure who turns out to be the angel Gabriel. John tries to bargain with Gabriel for an extension on his life subscription, citing all the demons that he has cast out for God. Gabriel however tells him that all he has ever done was for himself. John gets mad and calls Gabriel a half-breed. John thinks that his cancer is a personal grudge against him, but Gabriel tells him he will die because he smokes 30 cigarettes a day, and he will go to hell because of the life he took. John steps out in the rain ignoring Chaz calling to him and Angela hears his name. Later, Father Hennessy is locked inside a room, using a special gift he has to scan through newspapers, while hearing everything read aloud in his head. He scans until he hears the name Isabel and picks up the paper with the report. That night, Angela is watching the security footage of her sister when she hears the name Constantine. She rewinds it but hears nothing. Suddenly all the phones around her begin to ring. By the roadside, John begins to cough so hard he falls to the ground. He is then attacked by a bug demon who pins him down, but John uses the screeching beetles to drive it off. The demon tells him that he should have minded his own business and chases him but ends up splattered by a car. John and Chaz then meet up and they head over to see a voodoo priest called Papa Midnight, who runs an exclusive club. John gets in but Chaz is unable to. Inside, Angel and Demon half-breeds are mixed together having fun. John heads inside to see Papa Midnight. Papa Midnight is concerned about Constantine's health and reveals rumors that the devil is willing to come personally to collect his soul. John tells Papa Midnight about the demon attack earlier but Midnight refuses to believe this, because demons cannot walk on earth. Papa Midnight refuses to allow Constantine to use the chair due to him being neutral, and John warns that something big is coming. Just then, Balthazar, a powerful demon half-breed interrupts them. John wants to attack but Midnight warns him against this. 
Balthazar taunts John about his impending doom and John starts coughing and leaves. John is at home when Angela comes by asking for his help. He is hesitant at first but allows her to come in. Angela tells John that her sister was murdered but he learns that she jumped off the roof and does not believe Angela. She tells him that her sister was talking about demons and thinks she was brainwashed but John tells her to leave. Just then, a loud rumbling is heard and shadowy figures begin to fly past his apartment. John rushes outside as Angela had just left. He catches up to her and the two talk about God and the devil but suddenly the street lights all begin to go out around them. Only one store stays lit and they head towards it. Around them loud flapping wings can be heard drawing closer, John wraps a cloth around his hand and lights it, and it reveals and burns away the demons causing the lights to come back on. John figures out that the demons are after Angela and decides to see if her sister is in hell. They head over to Isabel's apartment and John tells Angela to get him a pan of water. He holds Isabel's cat and puts his foot inside of the water and tells Angela to leave the apartment. John stares into the cat's eyes and time around him seems to stop. When he stands up, he is in hell. Around him, everything is on fire with heavy scorching winds. Underneath the streets, the souls of the dam scream in terror. As he walks, he sees Isabel standing in front of him and the demons around him begin to draw closer. Isabel then prepares to jump and John begins to sprint towards her with the demons in hot pursuit. John manages to grab her hospital band before the demons catch him and pull himself from hell. Angela rushes in to see John's body steaming and he shows her the band, confirming that Isabel is indeed in hell. Father Hennessy then heads over to the morgue looking for Isabel's body. He touches her hand and uses his ability to reveal the mark on her hand. He suddenly gets really thirsty and runs over to a nearby store and tries to drink but no liquor will enter his mouth. Balthazar then walks in as Father Hennessy falls to the ground. He grabs a corkscrew and stabs a symbol into his hand as he drowns from alcohol coming from inside his body. Later, John reveals to Angela that as a child he could see demons and was admitted to a mental hospital. Depressed, he ended his own life and ended up in hell for two minutes but was revived. He tells her that heaven and hell are right here but on another plane. Only half-breed demons like Balthazar and a few angels are able to subtly influence humans but do not have much power. Angela gets a call and they head over to the scene of Father Hennessy's unaliving. John then sees the wound on his hand and reveals the mark. He calls the vermin man and tells him about the mark asking him to look into it. John and Angela head over to Isabel's hospital room and he looks around for anything that she would have left behind. He tries to get Angela to use her twin power and Angela remembers that as a child, they would leave each other messages on windows, and reveals with her breath a message. Corinthians 17. John and Angela then calls the vermin man who has a hell's Bible with Corinthians 17, and he reveals to them that Mammon, the son of the devil, is planning to come to earth by possessing a powerful psychic who they think is Isabel. The vermin man also reveals that Mammon would need divine assistance to be reborn on earth but then he hears a loud banging behind him. A fly suddenly crawls out of his eye and he screams in pain. Isabel and John arrive to see him covered in flies with a strong smell of sulfur all around. Elsewhere, the possessed illegal alien holding the Spear of Destiny steals a jeep and heads into the city. At John's apartment, Angela reveals that she could also see things but denied it. While Isabel embraced her gift, she feels guilty for not sticking up for Isabel and wants to see hell for herself. John warns her that the demons will also be able to see her but she still wants to go through with it. John fills a bathtub with water and Isabel gets inside. John tells her that she needs to be fully submerged and she nervously lowers herself. After a while she begins to run out of air. Angela begins to struggle but John holds her under until time stops and the tub explodes. Angela crawls out muttering about all those people she saw in hell. She takes off running towards where the vermin man passed and begins to get a vision of his killer. She reaches down and pulls out Balthazar's coin. John then begins to prepare for war, gathering weapons and charms to get revenge for his friends. The two head over to Balthazar's office and John gives her a protective necklace and tells her to stay in the car. John then attacks Balthazar with dragon's breath and the two start brawling. Angela decides to leave the car taking her gun and leaving the protective charm in the car. Women. Inside, John is beating on Balthazar with blessed brass knuckles, revealing his demonic face. John then stands over him, then prepares to send him back to hell unless he tells him about the plan. John almost completes his chant but Balthazar reveals that they need the blood of Christ to complete Mammon's return. As John leaves he shoots Balthazar, splattering him all over the table. As the half-demon lays there, a figure walks towards him and Balthazar begs to be saved, but the man watches as he is sent back to hell. John and Isabel meet up and John sees that she is not wearing the amulet. Suddenly Isabel is pulled away by a powerful force that flies away with her. John then gets Chaz and the two head over to Papa Midnight. John shoots his way inside and demands to use the chair, but Papa Midnight uses his magic to pin John against the wall. John reminds him that Hennessy and Vermin were his friends too and the demons are no longer playing by the rules. Papa Midnight brings John to the chair. He splashes cold water at his feet then uses a bare light bulb to electrocute John, 
who begins to see visions of the spear of destiny and loads of demons at the hospital. John is attacked but Papa Midnight pulls him out. They all begin to prepare for war, melting gold to create bullets. Chaz reveals that he knows a lot about killing demons, so John decides to take him along for the fight. Angela is flown to the hospital and thrown into the same pool that Isabel was found in. Behind her the possessed Mexican approaches her and Isabel lets off shots but he knocks her gun away. Chaz and John then split up, Chaz blesses the entire water system of the building while John confronts the half-breeds. He tells them to go to hell before the sprinklers come on, burning their skin. The demons screech in pain and John begins to shoot them down with Chaz backing him up. At the pool, Angela is held underwater until she wakes up in hell. Demons surround her as she hears a voice and sees an evil figure walking towards her. John and Chaz arrive at the pool but Isabel has already been possessed by Mammon. John and Chaz drag her out of the pool and John tries exorcising her and it seems to work, but Mammon tries bursting through Angela's belly. Chaz then begins to recite a prayer and John joins him and they stop Mammon from coming through. The two celebrate but Chaz is dragged away and smashed against the roof until he lays dying. John has had enough and reveals tattoos on his arms. He puts his tattoos together and forcefully summons the unseen force, who reveals to be the angel Gabriel. Gabriel reveals that humans have it easy, just being able to ask for forgiveness to make it into heaven, which no other being can do. She reveals her twisted plan to bring hell on earth, to make only the worthy being able to make it into heaven. Gabriel then blows John out of the room and prepares to summon Mammon fully. Outside, John begs God for help as he is out of options. John then uses broken glass and cut his arms causing him to slowly die. Gabriel pulls out the blade of destiny and prepares to resurrect Mammon but around her time stops. A figure dressed in white slowly descends before John. He sits in front John and tells him that he came personally for his soul. Lucifer reveals that he has big plans for him, and John reveals that his son is in the other room with Gabriel and the Spear of Destiny. Lucifer does not believe and goes to check for himself. He walks over to Isabel and pulls her away before Gabriel brings the spear down. He holds Isabel up and we see Mammon struggling in his arms, telling Gabriel that this world belongs to him and not his son. Gabriel tries to attack Lucifer but all her power is gone, as God has abandoned her. Lucifer then uses his power to send Mammon back to hell and burn the wings off Gabriel. Lucifer goes back to John and offers him an extension on his life for the information, but John wants him to release Isabel from hell instead. John outs his last cigarette as Lucifer begins to draw him away to hell, but John suddenly gets too heavy for Lucifer. A bright light then appears and John is being taken away to heaven for his sacrifice. Lucifer is not having this and rips out John's lung cancer, causing him to live. John wakes up and heads over to help Angela out. Gabriel also awakens with stubs where her wings used to be. She urges John to end her life, now that she is human, and hands him his gun, but John punches her instead and she feels pain for the first time. John and Angela then meet on a roof and he hands her the Spear of Destiny telling her to hide it where not even he can find it. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.